So in a recent video, I mentioned that Xiaomi is quite fun to use after receiving her most recent buff that we just got on the NA side of things for the Road to Lost Belt 7 part Atlantis campaign whole thing. And man, is that a mouthful. But I'm also working on bringing back the Low Star Legend series where it looks like the first character I'm going to be covering is going to be Persona. So I thought it'd be kind of fitting for me to do a video talking about Xiaomi since I think she's actually a quite strong option if you're lacking in a single target, not only just assassin, but just a single target R2 unit in general. And then I think it'll also be a very good follow-up into the more low star legends version of doing Persona since they're both single target arts assassins. So we're basically just going to be talking about Xiaomi in this video, why I think she's a fairly good option to go ahead and bring if you're going into boss fights, or even if you need just a decent single target for some 90 plus and 90 plus plus farming. Although for those, you are going to need a little bit of investment into her. I don't think you're going to really be using her at NP1. And sometimes it might also be a little bit more reliant on card RNG because of how her first skill works, but we're going to get into all that in today's video. If there's another servant you would like me to cover, and I not only just throw out polls every now and then for what low star character I'm going to be covering in the future, but if there's just a servant in general that you feel deserves to get a spotlight in the near future because they might be getting an event or they might be receiving a buff soon that might just you think it goes under the radar, go ahead and drop that servant in the comments down below and I'll get around to covering them because ideally I'd like this channel to have every single servant covered in the servant playlist so that if there's anything that you're ever worried about with like a servant or you just want to know how they work you always have a video to go to that is ideally what i'm going for is i want just a big old library of videos that people can always reference that being said, let's kind of get into the pros and cons of this servant. And in the background, I'm showing just not only just one run where she just does a lot of damage against a Lancelot, but then also more of a quote unquote real run against Kiara. I know we always have to use Kiara as a big punching bag, but when you have a single target servant, having someone who's moderately big has break bars, they just make a good punching bag until we start getting the Bleached Earth missions where we have different punching bags to go ahead and fight. And on that note, the first skill is just very nice. I mean, the chance to seal an enemy's NP is very good. It can give you basically an extra turn or survivability, but it's probably not going to come up very often because of how powerful the art supports are. In a vacuum, obviously very good because it pairs very well with her dodge. Functionally, you could buy yourself two turns, not only being able to stave off an NP for a turn, but also just blatantly live the NP or tank it with your evade. But because you have Castoria, you have Proto Merlin, and even lower rarity options like say Asclepius or even Paracelsus, guys that can offer you a guts, you don't really need it to have this ability, but it is quite nice to have in your back pocket. Say you're going up against a boss that will trigger their NP as soon as you break their bar. It can be very helpful to just kind of slap this on them preemptively, especially because you do want the skill to be up, you know, kind of 24 seven because of the demonic power mod, but more importantly, the power mod against cursed enemies. And so you might just go ahead and pop this, you know, go ahead and just preemptively see that but that could also lead to a little bit of conflicting interest i don't really like having defensive abilities on the same skill as an offensive ability because you might have already popped this right say you do know a boss is going to pop their np immediately on a break bar and you want to save this to go ahead and negate that instead of you know not getting the bonus damage with the curse power mod because 20 percent might not seem like a lot but it does add up when you're calculating you know the damage of you know having an attack buff that multiplies into a power mod that'll you know go into your arts buff right that different damage type will always start to add up more than you would expect it to and so instead of saving this for something like that you're probably just going to go ahead and go for the damage and then just use like proto merlin's illusion skill or you're going to use castoria's np and make sure you have like one or two hits available but it's nice to be there for say like solo capacity which i think is kind of apparent in lost belt 5.1 where you do have to use it for some solos but overall i really do like the first skill the buff does feel very nice getting to use a stronger chiyome over here on the na side of things because full disclosure my chiyome is np5 i've pulled quite a few of her in my time playing the game but it definitely does feel like it's making a difference especially because before this it was just sealing the enemy's np for a turn which again like as i explained is not the most impactful on arts teams it's nice to have in a vacuum but wasn't you know the craziest thing to have her second skill over here also just got better because of the most recent buff because you know a 30 percent arts buff is already going to be good you know you're an art servant it's giving you more np gain it's giving you more damage on your arts cards we all know that you know everybody well, i mean <laughs> most people know that if you're watching this maybe you're a newer player it is buffing your np gain on your arts cards and giving them more damage but then the on attack buff to put curse on people didn't really do anything 
outside of maybe trying to like stall an enemy down with damage over time because she does do evil curse on her NP, which does make the curse 200% stronger, which is pretty nice if you're trying to beat up some enemy that has like really high damage reduction or high defense it can be kind of nice for stuff like that but it makes it better because now whenever you have the second skill up you're stacking curse on the enemy and as long as that curse is up when the first skill is up you're just getting free damage it's just free damage you'll always have which is kind of like the best type of power mod that's why someone like say summer comma is really nasty or someone like yang is really nasty it's these debuff things that are pretty easy to slap on the enemy as long as they're you know god forbid not debuff buff immune you can slap this on functionally anybody and always have your power mod on and it makes those servants particularly strong and it lets chiyome join that group of servants to a lesser degree because obviously she's not getting like a hundred percent 150 or even a 200 percent power mod which i think would be a little too crazy to give her because she also does have the demonic power mod which doesn't come up all the time but is nice to have when you need it but more importantly, it gives her curse something to do, and that curse also just gets better because we're going to be getting the Jacques de Molay free to play CE that also gives you a further power mod against enemies that have curse, and Xiaomi's one of those servants that will just kind of get a pseudo buff from that in the future, you know? It just helps out all of those servants that happen to do curse and can't really do anything with it. Everybody just kind of gains access to that curse power mod, kind of like Honey Lake. Any servant that does burn just kind of got a little buff from that CE because now they just can utilize that burn and convert it into a power mod as well as a little bit of extra damage over time then i mean her third skill i think is just very nice evasion for a turn 30 percent battery can't really go wrong with that it's why you can use her in say 90 plus or 90 plus plus scenarios if you need her to chunk a demonic enemy and you happen to also have a face card you can not only benefit from the demonic power mod but also use your face card before doing damage to then apply curse then that allows you to access your curse power mod and because she's arts, you're going to pair her with, say, double Castoria. She's going to get 60% from both of their charismas combined, plus her own 30%. If you just, I don't know, have any starting charge CE on her, or you just unlock her a pen skill, so she starts at 10% gauge, she can just have 100%, which makes her very useful, especially if you don't have anything better. Now, her NP itself is nothing to really write home about. I mean, it seals the enemy's skills for a turn, which pairs kind of nice with the NP seal, but realistically you're not going to be firing this to be like oh i need to lock down the enemy it'll be a slight benefit that you get you know like okay they're not gonna smack me with anything too too annoying for the rest of the turn you know they're not gonna randomly fire their np or something along those lines and last my entire servant lineup away but it's just one of those things you're just firing it for damage really like i've never really found myself in a position where i'm like ah oh, i need to fire this so i can get that evil curse damage going because to be completely honest i've never used her in any of the high damage reduction quests i probably should have but instead i always tend to use someone like jolter both the summer and the normal version because one of them does burn one of them does curse and i just really like jolter I also will just use Morgan for those because, hey, it might take a long time because we're just putting curse slowly on people, but hey, I get to look at Morgan the entire time, and I'm sorry for the Chiyome enjoyers that are watching this video, but the sad truth is I do enjoy <laughs> Jolter and Morgan a little bit more than Chiyome, so I've never really brought her to those, but it would make her a bit better if you do want to bring her to some of those. You get to use the evil curse and kind of quote-unquote burst those guys down because your damage over time will be doing more than the average damage over time getting that evil curse buff, but overall i really like her as just a decent solid option that you can just pull on any banner which is where i think her strength really relies i mean is she going to be as strong as somebody like comma like absolutely not Kama's ridiculously broken i mean that unit was built in like year three and is still kind of holding up even in current meta she's still just pretty good I think it's going to be really hard for Kama to really ever fall off in the FGO meta. But the thing is, Chiyomi doesn't have to be better than Kama. She's a four star. She's technically a cheaper option and something that you might just pull numerous copies of as you're summoning for other servants. And that's where I think characters like her really benefit being a decent, strong, solid option that you can build up over time. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I've just kind of thought that she's a very solid, maybe like BB plus tier servant. I don't know if she can quite crack into that a tier considering the grand scope of all the servants that exist in the game a tier i think is a little too high for her considering the servants that i would probably place up there but considering you know she does a good job at just doing generally most things you would want a dps to do but doesn't excel at any of them i think a b or b plus rating does really benefit this servant a lot because again you know she obviously if she's going to be in higher ratings you know she could have a bigger battery bigger power mods 
Maybe also just not be an assassin because if you don't know, assassins have a negative class multiplier. Effectively, their class gives them no bonus damage. It actually hinders them more than it helps them. So assassins are always kind of in a bad spot just in general when they release, but Chiyome being able to reach that B, B plus rating for me, despite the inherent misgivings of her class, I think just go to show how actually good she is. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed the video or found it informative, a like on the video and a subscription to the channel would be greatly appreciated as it is free and it benefits me more than you know. And with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. You guys have yourselves a nice one and I'll catch y'all in the next video. Peace, late guys.